El Hajj, the pilgrimage, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. O people, take your Lord as a shield, for as a matter of fact, the shock of the hour is a tremendously dreadful thing. On the day you behold it, you will find every woman giving suck, abandoning even her suckling in the confusion, and every pregnant one miscarrying, and people will appear to you to be drunk, while they are not actually drunk. The punishment of Allah will be so severe that it will leave people in a terrible state of horror and dread. And there are some people who argue about Allah, without any knowledge and follow every Satan who is devoid of all good. About whom it is decreed that whoever makes friends with him, he will invariably lead him astray and conduct him to the sufferings of the flaming fire. O oh, people, if you doubt the resurrection, then consider our scheme of unformed things. We have indeed created you from dust, then from a sperm drop, then from a blood clot, and then from a lump of flesh, partly formed and partly unformed, that we make our power and the real state of things clear to you. And we cause to stay in the wombs that drop of fluid, when we please to make a perfectly formed being, for a given period of time. Then we bring you forth formed as infants. Then we bring you up with the result that you reach your prime. And there are some of you who are called to death early. And there are others of you who are made to live to the worst part of life, a miserable, very old age, with the result that they know nothing after having had knowledge. While the earth appears to you lifeless and barren, it throbs with life and swells with growth and puts forth every kind of beautiful herbage when we send down water upon it. Such is the cycle of life and nature to prove that Allah alone is the truth and it is he who brings the dead to life and he indeed is possessor of power to do all that he will. And that the hour is bound to come there is no doubt about it, and that Allah will raise up those who are in the graves. And among the people, there is he who argues about Allah, though he has neither knowledge nor guidance, and nor an illuminating book, turning his side out of pride, with the result that he leads some astray from the path of Allah. There is for him disgrace in this world, and on the day of resurrection, we will make him suffer the punishment of burning. And to such it will be said, This is the result of what your own hands have sent on before, and Allah is not the least unjust to his servants. And among people, there is such a one who worships Allah, as it were, on the very verge in a wavering state of mind. If any good befalls him, he is satisfied with it. But if there befalls a trial, he returns to his former ways. He has lost both this world as well as the next. That indeed is the obvious loss. He calls apart from Allah upon the things which can do him neither harm nor good. That indeed is straying far away. He calls upon him whose harm is much more likely than his good. How evil is this false god to be his patron, and how evil is he to be his associate? Allah will surely cause those who believe and do righteous deeds to enter gardens served with running streams to keep them green and flourishing. Surely Allah does what he has a mind to do. Whoso thinks that Allah will not help him in this present life, nor in the next, let him help himself to go into the heaven by some means, and cut the divine help off 
and then see if his device can take away that which enrages him. That is how it is. We have revealed this Qur'an comprising clear arguments. Yet the truth is that Allah guides him to the right way who wishes to be guided. Let those who believe and those who Judaized and the Sabians and the Christians and the Magians and those who associate other gods with God know that Allah will decide between them on the day of resurrection. Surely Allah is witness over all things. Have you not considered that whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth, and also the sun, the moon, and the stars, the mountains, the trees, the moving creatures, and many of the people make obeisance to Allah? Yet many of the people are those who become deserving of punishment because of their disobedience. None can honor the person whom Allah disgraces. Verily, Allah does what He pleases. These two, the believers and the disbelievers, are two adversaries who dispute about their Lord. As for those who disbelieve, garments of fire have been tailored for them, and boiling water shall be poured down over their heads, whereby whatever is in their bellies will be melted, and their skins as well will come off their bones. And furthermore, there will be whips of iron for punishing them. Every time they seek to escape from there in their anguish and from its sorrows, they will be hurled back into it, and it will be said to them, Keep on suffering the torment of burning. As for those who believe and do righteous deeds, Allah will admit them to gardens served with running streams to keep them green and flourishing. Therein they shall be given ornaments, bracelets of gold and pearls, and therein their raiments shall be of silk. Because they were inspired to speak noble words and do noble deeds, and were guided to the path of the highly praiseworthy God. As to those who disbelieve and hinder people from following the path of Allah and from going to the holy mosque, which we have made a source of goodness and benefit for all people, and where the inhabitants thereof and the visitors from outside are equal. And whoever seeks wrongfully to promote crookedness in it, we shall make him suffer woeful punishment. And recall the time when we assigned to Abraham the site of the holy house, bidding him, Associate none with me, and keep my house clean and pure for those who go round it. Perform the circuits, and for those who stay in it, for worshipping me, devotedly, and for those who bow down, and fall prostrate in prayer before me. Prophet, call on people to make the pilgrimage. They will come to you on foot, and riding on all sorts of lean and fast means of transport coming from every distant deep highway and mount track, so that they, the pilgrims, may witness benefits that lay therein for them, and that at the time of making a sacrifice on days prescribed, they may mention the name of Allah over the beasts of the family of cattle he has given them. When you have sacrificed the animal, then eat from this yourselves, and also feed the poor distressed one and the needy on that. Then let the people perform their needful rituals regarding the cleansing of their bodies and shaving, and fulfill their voluntary promises made to Allah, and perform the last circuit of the ancient, free, invulnerable house. That is the purpose behind the construction of the house. So he who honors the things declared sacred by Allah will find that it is good for him in the sight of his Lord. And remember that all the cattle are made lawful to you except those already mentioned to you as unlawful in the Qur'an and abstain from unclean practice of idolatry and shun false speech. Remaining upright devoting yourselves in worship and obedience entirely to Allah, 
not associating anything with him. Indeed, he who associates anything with Allah falls, as it were, from on high, and either the birds snatch him away, or the wind blows him off to some deep place very far away. That is the law which you should bear in mind. He who respects symbols appointed by Allah will find that this respect proceeds from and leads to the piety of hearts. It is lawful for you to take benefits from these for an appointed term. They can be used for riding, carrying burdens, for milk, etc. Then the lawful place of their sacrifice is by the ancient, free, and invulnerable house. And we have prescribed certain rites of sacrifice for every people that they may mention the name of Allah over the beast of the family of cattle he has provided for them. So, O people, your God is one God. Therefore, you should all submit to him alone and give glad tidings of success to the humble and the submissive ones, whose hearts are filled with awe when the name of Allah is mentioned, and who are patiently persevering in whatever of the afflictions befalls them, and who observe prayer, and spend from that which we have provided them. We have made these sacrificial animals among the symbols appointed by Allah for you. They are of immense good to you. So whenever you offer them for sacrifice, do it in the name of Allah while they stand drawn up in lines. When their flanks collapse on being slaughtered, eat from the meat of them and feed him who is in need but contented and him who begs. In this way, we have made these animals subservient to you so that you may render thanks. It is neither their flesh nor their blood of these sacrifices which matters to Allah, but it is guarding against evil and devotion to duty on your part that matters to him. Thus he has made them subservient to you, that you may proclaim the greatness of Allah for his guiding you, and give glad tidings to the doers of good to others. Allah will certainly defend those who believe, because Allah loves no perfidious, ungrateful person. Permission to fight in self-defense is now given to those Muslims against whom war is waged, because they have been done injustice to, and Allah has indeed might and power to help them. Those who have been driven out of their homes without any just cause, their only fault was that they said, Our Lord is Allah. If Allah had not repelled some peoples by means of others, cloisters and churches and synagogues and mosques, wherein the name of Allah is mentioned very frequently, would have been raised to the ground in large numbers. And Allah will surely help one who helps his cause. Allah is indeed all-powerful. Almighty. They are the persecuted people who, if we establish them in the land, giving them power, will observe prayer and keep on presenting the zakat and enjoin people to do good and forbid evil, and Allah will finally settle all issues. And, Prophet, if they cry lies to you, there is nothing new in it, even so before them. The people of Noah and the tribes of Ad and Thamud also cried lies to their apostles of God. So did the people of Abraham and the people of Lot and the inhabitants of Midian. And Moses also was cried lies to. But I granted respite to the disbelievers for long. Then I took them to task. Imagine how terrible was the result of their denial of me, and how awful the change I effected in them. And how many a township have we destroyed, because the people thereof were given to wicked ways, 
so that they have fallen down on their roofs. And how many a well is completely deserted, and how many a strongly built lofty castle met the same doom because we destroyed their occupants? Why do they not travel in the land so that they should have hearts that help them to understand and ears which can help them hear? As a matter of fact, when going astray, it is not the physical eyes that are blind, but blind are the hearts which lie in the bosoms. And they, the disbelievers, demand of you to expedite their punishment. Allah will not fail his promise. Remember, however, that one day with your Lord is sometimes equal to one thousand years by your counting. And how many people of a township were given to wicked ways, but I respited them long. Then I took them to task, and to me alone shall be the return of all of them. Say, O people, I am but a plain warner to you all, against the evil consequences of refusal and misdeeds. There awaits protection and a generous and honorable provision for those who believe and do deeds of righteousness. But those who strive hard against our messages, seeking to frustrate us in our aims and ends, it is they who will be the inmates of the flaming fire. And we have sent no messenger, nor a prophet before you, but when he longed to attain what he sought, Satan interfered and put hindrances in the way of what he sought after. But Allah removes the hindrances that are placed by Satan. Then Allah firmly establishes his messages, and Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Allah permits the interference of Satan so that he may make the hindrance which Satan puts in the way of the messengers serve as a trial for those whose hearts carry disease of hypocrisy and for those whose hearts are hardened because of disbelief in fact the wrongdoers have gone far in their antagonism and he permits this so that those who have been given knowledge may know that this quran is the truth from your lord and may believe in it and humble themselves before him from their very hearts and Allah will indeed be the guide of those who believe to the straight and right path. And those who have disbelieved will continue to have doubt about this Qur'an until the hour overtakes them suddenly or the scourge of a destructive day befalls them. On that day, the kingdom shall belong to Allah alone. He will judge between people so that those who believe and do deeds of righteousness will be admitted into blissful gardens. But those who disbelieve and cried lies to our messages shall suffer a humiliating punishment. And Allah will certainly provide for ever a goodly provision to those who leave their homes for the cause of Allah and are then slain or die a natural death. Surely Allah, He is indeed the best of constant providers. He will make them enter a place which they will like. Verily, Allah is all-knowing, forbearing. That is how it will be, and whoso retaliates in proportion to that injury which is inflicted on him, and again is transgressed against. Allah will certainly help him. Verily, Allah is all-pardoning, absolving people of their sins, all-protecting. That system of requital is to prove that it is Allah who makes the night gain on the day, and makes the day gain on the night, and that Allah is all-hearing, all-seeing. That is also to show that it is Allah who is the ultimate truth, and that which they call upon apart from him is falsehood and perishable, and because Allah is the high, the great. Do you not see that Allah sends down water from the clouds, and the dry earth becomes green? 
Verily, Allah is the knower of subtleties, the all-aware. All that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth belongs to him, and Allah is self-sufficient and worthy of all praise. Do you not consider that Allah has made subservient to you all that is on the earth? Do you not see that the ships sail through the sea by his command, and he holds the rain back from falling upon the earth, save by his permission? Verily, Allah is most compassionate to people, and ever merciful. And it is he who gave you life. Then he will call you to death. Then will he bring you back to life again. The thing is, a human being is most ungrateful. We have prescribed for every people modes of worship which they should observe. Let them not, therefore, dispute with you in the matter of Islamic mode of worship, and call the people to your Lord, for you are indeed on the exact and right path of guidance. And if they still contend with you, say, Allah knows best all that you do. Allah will judge between you and us on the day of resurrection concerning all that in which you differ. Do you not know that Allah knows whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth? Surely this is all recorded in a book of laws, and indeed it is easy for Allah. And they worship apart from Allah the things for which he has revealed no authority and about which they themselves have no knowledge. And the wrongdoers will find no helper. And when our clear messages are recited to them, you will notice an expression of disapproval on the faces of those who disbelieve. They would almost assault those who recite our messages to them. Say, Shall I then inform you of something even worse than this? It is the fire. Allah has promised it to those who disbelieve, and what a vile resort it is. O people, here is a parable, so listen to it. Those whom you call upon apart from Allah cannot create even a fly, though they may all join hands for it. And if the fly should snatch away something from them, they cannot recover it from it. Feeble indeed is the seeker, and feeble the sought after. They do not appreciate Allah as he should be appreciated, and no true concept of his attribute they have formed to pay him the respect he deserves. Surely Allah is all-powerful, almighty. Allah chooses his messengers from among angels and from among men. Verily, Allah is all-hearing, all-seeing. He knows the future of the people and their past, and to Allah do all matters stand referred for judgment. O you who believe, bow down and prostrate yourself, and worship your Lord, and do good deeds, so that you may attain your goal. And strive your hardest to win the pleasure of Allah, as hard a striving as is possible, and as it behoves you. He has chosen you and has imposed no hardship upon you in the matter of your faith. So follow the creed of your father Abraham. He named you Muslims, both before this and again in this book, the Qur'an, so that the messenger may be a guardian over you, and that you may be guardians over people. Therefore, observe prayer. Keep on presenting the zakat, and hold fast to Allah. He is your patron. What a gracious patron, and what a gracious helper.